Before you raise and support the vehicle, take a breaker bar and a 21 millimeter socket, and break the lug nuts free while the vehicle is on the ground. Raise and support your vehicle. Since the lug nuts are loose, I can use the socket and finish removing them. Remove the wheel, place it aside. Start by grabbing the caliper before you remove it, and pushing it, pulling it outward to try to compress it so that when we go to unbolt it, it will slide away from the brake pads. I'm going to take a 14 millimeter wrench, see if I can break these free. They're pretty tight. I'm going to use a Diblo mallet. Break that one free. Do the same with the bottom one. Those loose, I can switch to a ratcheting wrench. So I'm gonna use a ratcheting wrench to finish removing these. Now these are actually the slide bolts. When you pull them out, So what I'm going to do, this lower slide bolt, the control arm is in the way, I can't pull it out. I'm just going to roll the brake caliper down. I'm just going to thread the lower bolt back in a little bit, that way it stays put. And I can remove the brake pads, use a flat bladed screwdriver or a small pry bar. These ones are pretty stuck. Try a small screwdriver. That's okay if they fall on the floor. Old brake pads anyways. I'm not too worried about the rear one if I can't get it out because I've kind of released the pressure from it by removing the front one. I'm gonna unbolt the bracket and I'm just gonna pull the whole thing off together. I'm gonna to remove the two 19 millimeter caliper bracket bolts. The lower one is here. The upper one is here. I'm gonna start with the upper one. The 19 millimeter wrench on here. Take my dead blow mallet, break it free. With the top one loosened, I will loosen the lower one. Same thing, I'll use a dead blow mallet to break it free. Since these are loose, I'm gonna to switch to a ratchet and 19 millimeter socket to speed removal. I get that one pretty loose, but not all the way out. I wanna work on the bottom one. It's gonna need an extension. Right, try an extension in here. Put the ratchet out here. Use a 19 millimeter socket and extension. Remove the lower nut, lower bolt. Finish removing the top one. Hold on to the bracket because it will become loose. Needs a little persuasion. It's frozen in there. So now I can unscrew, take off our slide pin bolts. Lay the caliper up here. For now, take a bungee cord, just hold it up and out of the way. The e-brake should be released, but this is pretty rusty. There might be a rust ridge in here. I'm going to try to get this rotor off. Normally there's a rubber cap here. You pop that out and you can reach the adjuster and turn the adjuster in to pull the e-brake shoes, which are inside here, together to help release this rotor. We may have to do that. I'm going to try spraying some rust penetrant around the edge of the hub and around the studs. I'm going to give it a couple whacks with our dead blow hammer, see if the rotor will just come right off. Otherwise, I'll have to work on releasing the e-brake.
might get lucky and it slid right off without having to release the adjustment. If you had to release the adjustment, you'd use this access hole and you'd go through here and turn this so the shoes would pull themselves in here. Here's our old rotor and pads from our vehicle. They're pretty rusted up. The car was sitting for a while, so they needed to be replaced. As you can see, the new ones, 1AAuto.com, are an exact match in the style of pad. They've got the wear indicators, the backing shims, same amount of lug holes, same opening to get to the e-brake adjuster. These will fit on your car great and help you stop really well. Install the new rotor. I'm going to start by installing it backwards. This way I can clean the oil off it that keeps it from corroding and shipping. I'm going to clean the inside because that's where the parking brake shoes are going to run. Take a rag, wipe down any excess. Down the inside, flip it over, install it over the studs. Since the new rotor is brand new, it's thicker, and it won't fit over our parking brake adjuster, our parking brake shoes. So we need to spin the auto adjuster in to give us more clearance. And I'm just gonna turn it up with this flat bladed screwdriver. I'm gonna pull the shoes in. This is an automatic adjustment, so as soon as you pull the handbrake a couple times, or the parking brake handle, it will adjust out and it latches. So these little notches lock against the spring, so it, once it goes this way it can't spin back. It has to be flipped back manually by doing this. Since I touched them, I'm just going to clean them off. The brake part's cleaner. Let's try our rotor this time. There it is. So it should slide over with no resistance. I'll take a lug nut to hold the rotor in place. We're going to remove the brake pad clips. They're stainless. We can clean them up and reuse them. Just use a flat bladed screwdriver, pop them out. Pop out both sides. I'm also going to clean where they sit. Take some brake parts cleaner. Wire brush. Knock off the loose stuff. Repeat for the other side. Clean the clips, brake parts cleaner. Little brush. Reinstall them, caliper bracket. Clip back into place. This is ready to go back on the car. Unhook our brake caliper. Wait there for a second. You need to compress the piston inside here. Use our C clamp and an old brake pad and just gently compress the caliper piston in. That's good. Place these aside. 
before we can install the bracket fully, the lower slide pin that has the rubber bushing on it has to go through the caliper. We can actually start threading it in a little bit. It's going to sit here because the suspension arm is in the way, I can't slide it in. So it needs to sit like this. Now I can line up the bracket. Capture the top bolt. Now I can capture the lower bolt. I'll start tightening the bolt. Before we go too far, I skipped it, but we're going to do it now. Clean this brake rotor surface down from the protective oil that it's shipped with. You can wipe off any excess with a rag. Now we can install our pads. I'm gonna make sure that we didn't touch the surface of the pad. If you did, you can just clean it with some brake parts cleaner. Put a little bit of caliper grease on the ears. Again, same thing, make sure these pads are nice and clean. A little bit of caliper grease. We'll place the outside pad in here. And slide our caliper back over. I'm going to push the little boot in, slide our caliper pins in here, thread them in. When I had this rotor off and we were cleaning up, I actually found the rubber plug that belongs in here. I'm going to replace that. I'm going to torque the brake caliper carrier bolts, these two big ones back here. Torque is 116 to 144. So I got my torque wrench set to 120 foot pounds. This top one, I don't need the extension. Caliper slide pins, torque is 20 to 35. Got my torque wrench set to 30. Final step, after installing the wheel and torquing the lug nuts when the car is on the ground, gently step on the brake pedal and what that's going to do is bring the caliper piston out to meet the pads. See right now the brake caliper is loose, it's moving on its slide pins. When you step on the brakes, it pulls it in, pulls the brakes to the rotor, that's what helps you stop. So we need to bring that piston out so it takes up the gap that's here and you'll be able to stop. Install the wheel. Thread them on by hand first. Torque on these is 72 to 85. I've got the torque wrench set to 80 foot-pounds. Go on cross pattern. Wheels installed and torqued. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.